Hello everyone and welcome back to another Med Boys Monday. To get a fourth quartile on the infamous CASPER exam, you must know how to answer ethical scenarios. So today we'll be showing you exactly how to do that. If you find it helpful, please like and please subscribe to the channel. Let's get into it. The first step to answering any kind of ethical question is to extract the key information out of the scenario and properly understand what the scenario is telling us and also what the question is asking us. So we'll first be going over some general information about how to answer the questions and then we'll actually be doing a scenario with you towards the end of the video so make sure you watch until the end. So here's an example that we'll be working with for this video. The question is, you're writing your history test and you see your friend cheating off of their phone. What do you do? The first question you should be asking yourself is what the main conflict is here. For this case, cheating is against the rules because it's unfair to the rest of the students and is also not a fair evaluation of the cheating student's knowledge. Therefore, cheating is the biggest conflict here. This will be key when it comes to formulating your answer in the future. As you may have heard, Casper loves the four principles approach. If you don't know the four principles, they're autonomy, beneficence, non-maleficence, and justice. If you look at almost any ethical scenario, you can connect one of these or even multiple principles to the scenario and mention it in your answer. Next, these are some rules that you should apply to all of your answers when you're creating them. First, you should never go against your employees or never go against the people who you're working under. This is because hospitals don't want you to disobey them. One hack that we personally used for Casper is to have a pre-made intro and conclusion. For example, an intro that you could use would be in the situation, the conflict is between X and Y. A conclusion could be, I will prioritize the well-being of X and Y by doing this. This adds structure to your answers so that the evaluator can just easily follow how your answer is progressing in your line of thinking, and this will ultimately lead to you getting a better score. It's always good to gather more information. As a doctor, you're always going to have to make decisions based on limited information, but also change those decisions whenever new information is brought into the picture. In addition, it's always wise to also involve other people in the decision-making process. For example, let's say there's a medical scenario. You could always bring in another doctor as a consult, but you want to make sure that you don't breach confidentiality or privacy because that's one of the major things that Casper looks at. Lastly, never break the law. I know it's obvious, just don't do it. Now after this step, you want to show the evaluator that you can consider both sides. This means providing a plausible explanation for why the person did what they did and also why they should not have done what they did. So this will show the evaluator that you have an open mind, which is really good for getting the fourth quartile. By the way, Casper can make or break your medical school application. So if you want some detailed advice or you want a full breakdown of what's going to be on the exam, please check out our previous videos made on the topic that you can find in the description below. Now we're going to talk about how to actually answer the ethical dilemma. You never want to be on the fence because being indecisive is something the evaluators don't like and you want to actually give an answer rather than provide both sides. Let's now go over the Casper scenario that we talked about at the start of the video. We'll be showing you how to answer that question line by line. To start off, it's important that you acknowledge that this is an ethical dilemma because of the fact that it is a true dilemma with multiple different perspectives involved. So you could say something like, in this situation, the conflict is between the well-being of my friend and the rules and academic code of conduct involved in taking tests as well as the classroom itself. After this, we can proceed to gather information without making assumptions. Now, this is very important to explicitly mention because it shows the evaluators you won't be acting based on limited information totally. What you can say is something like, I'm going to gather more information without making assumptions by approaching my friend in a non-confrontational manner and telling him about my observations to verify whether or not he was cheating. This is the mature way to approach the situation and I'm, I'm sure the evaluators will really respect that from you. When you're gathering information, it's a great place to show empathy. So let's look at this scenario. For example, you could say something like, I know the education system is very stressful because if you want to pursue further education, you need good grades. And if the, my friend was unprepared, he, was, he may be forced to cheat. And that's why he was put into this situation and I can empathize with him 
because of that. Then we will explain both sides and show that we can make a decision in an unbiased manner. So, how would we show both sides? In this case, you could say something like, on one hand, this is my friend we're talking about, and he may have not had enough time to study because of something else happening at home or outside of the school, or they may have felt pressured to cheat because they didn't trust their own knowledge or their own studying enough because they want to get that good grade. On the other hand, of course, since they cheated, this is super unfair to the rest of the class. And it also violates the academic code of conduct and it also is a problem of integrity. So those are the two perspectives that we'd be dealing with. When you're writing this, you can mention the principle of justice. You could say that justice is a factor in this scenario because the student or my friend is cheating and therefore they're gaining an unfair advantage in comparison to their class and this is completely against the academic code of conduct. Since you've discussed both sides now, you must come to a decision. And the decision must be firm because you don't want the evaluators to think that you're not taking a stance. But you can also be creative with your answer. So you can use the if then framework like we'll be showing you now. For example, you could say in this scenario, I would tell my friend to come clean to the teacher that he cheated on the test he is cheating is against the rules and it's unfair to the rest of our classmates. If he does agree to this, I would even go with him to talk to the teacher so that I can vouch for him and I can make sure that potentially the consequences are not as severe. On the other hand, however, if he does not want to go to the professor and talk to them, I would have no choice but to report him and his actions to the professor themselves and have the punishment see fit only because I need to make sure that I'm not part to cheating and I'm also upholding academic integrity. I would follow up with my friend regardless of the solution that I take because I want to make sure that he does well in the future and that any cheating occurrences do not happen as well. To break down this answer, it just shows the evaluators that you consider hypothetical scenarios where your friend agrees with your actions or does not and you also present a long-term solution by following up with your friend. And there you have it. We showed you exactly how to answer an ethical scenario on the Casper exam. If it helped you, please like and subscribe as it really supports the channel. And stay on the lookout for how to answer personal questions on the Casper exam because they're equally as important and you need them to get that fourth quartile score. See you next Monday.